wish to uh, welcome you to Moi University. My name is uh, Professor Isaac Sangaposke. I'm the Vice Chancellor of Moi University. Uh, Moi University was established in 1984 as the second public university in Kenya, uh, following a Professor Makay's report to establish a university in a rural setting. Uh, Moi University was given a fresh charter in 2013 under the University's Act number 42 of 2012 of the laws of Kenya. And currently, the university has 14 schools, among them the School of Engineering. The School of Engineering was started as one of the pioneer faculties of, at Moi University. And uh, the change of name from uh, the Faculty of Technology to School of Engineering was as a result of a general restructuring of the university and in line with the new strategic plan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the School of Engineering is one of the pioneer schools in the university and was formed in 1986 and now has five academic departments. All engineering courses offered at the School of Engineering in the university are recognized in Kenya and internationally and are registered by the Engineering Board of Kenya, what you call the EBK. Moi University Strategic Plan 2021-2025 uh, 2020, uh, targets to improve the capacity for research and innovation and develop more linkages with local and international institutions. And uh, the university has the School of uh, Graduate Studies, Research and Innovation, which coordinates all research activities. Coming to academic staff in the university, uh, we have a university-wide, the 50 professors, uh, 79 associate professors, senior lecturers, 164 and 597 uh, lecturers, making a total of 890. Let me come to student participation. PhD students with good academic records are given an opportunity to work as graduate assistants and they are thereby linking the research and, uh, and teaching practice. Uh, research support for development of research, more university research fund, what you call the URF, allocates a defined proportion of university revenue and capitation for research activities as will be determined from time to time. Uh, in terms of resource allocation, every year, the departmental board chaired by the chairperson of the department identifies the needs in terms of teaching and learning resources, such as books and ICT infrastructure, among others. The dean approves and forwards to the deputy vice chancellor academic research and extension or action. The university planning committee chaired by the deputy vice chancellor administration planning and development considers a report in, for the resource allocation of the school and approves with or without adjustments. Let's start to staff capacity building. Moi University has been retooling teaching staff through periodic provision of short pedagogy pedagogical training in curriculum delivery and research supervision techniques. The short training programs have enabled teaching staff to adopt the new methods of teaching and research supervision that are facilitated by the technology. In terms of learning environment, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the university provides adequate learning resources that include ICT facilities, and internet hotspots to enable students continue with learning inside and outside the university uh, lecture rooms. The school has integrated its courses as on the university-wide online learning platform, what we call the MSOMI. And in terms of quality assurance, the director of quality assurance at Mo University uh, performs regular surveillance uh, audits on academic departments and quality data that is used to develop performance criteria and indicators for quality assurance. In terms of international accreditation, 
because this is very important for us, the university has commenced the process of inter internationally accrediting its programs. The process started with the PhD in materials and textile engineering and PhD in energy studies, all under the School of Engineering. The programs are already accredited national, nationally by the Commission for University Education and we wish to take this opportunity to take you through a virtual tour of the School of Engineering where the two programs are, are housed. We hope you will enjoy the tour and thank you very much. Welcome to the School of Engineering at Moi University. This is one of the pioneer schools having been established in 1986. Currently, the school offers three PhD programs, Doctor of Philosophy in Energy Studies, Doctor of Philosophy in Material and Textile Engineering, Doctor of Philosophy in Industrial Engineering. We also offer seven master's programs and undergraduate degree programs. All postgraduate programs in the school are offered on full-time basis combining face-to-face -face and online modes. At the School of Engineering, we are committed to providing quality engineering education through relevant quality teaching and research. Therefore here, we have a range of facilities to support postgraduate teaching and research. For instance, we have small classrooms for face-to-face -face learning modes. These rooms provide appropriate environment where our PhD students interact with instructors and get the most theoretical knowledge out of the training curriculum. Then there are larger lecture halls fitted with modern technology equipment for instructors and learners use. We are talking about both liquid crystal display and light emitting diode projectors right above that display educational video, images, and computer data on regular screens, interactive smart boards, and other flat surfaces. A good amount of our wall spaces inside the classrooms and lecture halls are dedicated for the mounted whiteboards that complement in-person training. We have postgraduate rooms that feature innovative technology. This is where our engineering students take online courses. We have conference rooms, equipped with wireless internet connectivity and facilities for audiovisual presentations. In this room, our students participate in educational conferences, seminars, and workshops. We additionally have laboratory equipment and a modern library as an area where students come to read. It is equipped with carols which provide quiet environments suitable for private studies. Now this is the Mackay Building. It houses the Material and Textile Engineering Laboratory. An additional laboratory is located in Eldred Town, where we also have our textile factory known as Rivertex East Africa Limited. The site remains convenient because students get an opportunity to extend their practical research in an actual factory setting. Moi University provides shuttles whenever the students want to get to this location and carry out their experimental work. The two material and textile engineering laboratories have been equipped to facilitate teaching and research in polymers, ceramics, composites, and textile structures. There are a number of ongoing PhD research projects in these laboratories. For instance, there is a research on the development of bifunctional dyes from natural sources, where equipment such as particle grinder, water bath, Raman spectroscope, spectrophotometer, Fourier transform infrared spectroscope, color matching cabinet, 
light fastness tester, perspiration fastness tester, and rubbing fastness tester come in handy. I am Karen Desnagule, a PhD researcher in the field of natural dyes. And currently I'm developing a bifunctional natural dye using three dyes. Um, one of it is uh, the mineral dye, which is this one. And then I'm also using uh, Aliambadiki, that dye. And then I'm also using Itola. It's a dye for the back. It's called Itola. And then the fourth one is also Omda, a natural dye. And the salt base that I'm using is clay zero, and also distilled water. In a brief, I just get two, two grams of the dye, which I'm going to measure. Then I put, I put it into a beaker and mix with solvent, for example, water. And I mix it with water. This is the mineral dye. So this is the color that we get. So from this dye, I will uh, extract it using an oil bath. Uh, for 60 minutes and also for more than 60 minutes at 100 degrees. And after extraction, I save, I filter the dye and then carry out analysis with the grammar and also using um, FTNR. After analysis, there is more of separation and then also using chromatography like TLC. So this is what I'm doing for my research currently. There is also ongoing research on design and fabrication of biodegradable composite from PLA and cotton calotropis porcera bust fibers for packaging application. In this research, equipment such as compression molding machine, universal tensile testing machine, and high resolution digital microscope are extensively used. Another research is on valorization of agro waste. My name is uh, Benson Dulo. I'm a PhD researcher. I work in collaboration with, uh, between Ghent University, Campus Cotric, and uh, Mo University. My project or research area is uh, on valorization of uh, agro waste in the Kenyan context. So, what we've done so far is we've extracted, got the extent of extracting. Um, and natural dyes from these agro wastes. This is the original, and this is a dyed sample from a coconut husk. So you come to this color matching chamber, and you have your, your, your two samples. You look at how they match. And if you go here, the, you see the level of fading is more than what we have for this one. This is more strong than compared to the samples. So it is it's around this, 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 value, maybe two. So it means the, the level of fading here is really high. We have yet another ongoing research on the development of bacterial resistant fabrics through application of dye extracts from Datura stramonium, Rickinus communis, and Galinsoga parviflora. In this research, equipment such as particle size analyzer, oven, spectrophotometer, freezers, optical microscopes, and sample dyeing machine are normally used. I'm extracting a natural dye from peanut waste. You're trying to add value to waste. So what I'm doing right now, we have extracted this dye stuff from the peanuts. And what I'm working on right now is the dyeing process. So, uh, um, Following a standard procedure, like I just have to vary a few conditions to see where the dye works best. And currently, um, I'm optimizing pH, that's like I'm working with different levels of pH and maintaining every other condition. Another research is on development and optimization of zinc sulfide nanostructure surface layers with selected transition metal dopants for photocatalysis. Equipment such as digitally controlled oven, high performance computer, oil bath, and HR microscope are routinely used. We additionally have an ongoing research on performance evaluation of diatomaceous based construction bricks, stabilized with sisal fibers, lime, 
and high density polyethylene. In this research, equipment such as high temperature furnace, tensile testing machine, differential thermal analyzer, compression testing machine, material cutting machine, and HR microscope are largely used. Other research topics conducted in these laboratories include development of textile dieffluent biofloculants from cotton gene trash soil isolates exopolysaccharides, multi-layered cellulose acetate and polyacrylonitrile beaded nanofiber membranes for textile dyeing wasted water treatment, evaluating the efficacy of multifunctional cotton fabric based on nanoparticles phytosynthesized with potato peels. The material and textile engineering laboratories also feature other equipment for cross-cutting research. These include plasma-enhanced chemical vapor deposition, used for thin film development and studies. Fourier transform infrared spectroscope, used in the studies of functional groups in compounds and molecules such as dye molecules. Ultraviolet visible spectrometer, used for quantitative analysis of compounds such as concentration of chromophores in a dye solution. Atomic absorption spectroscope, used for characterizing chemical composition of various materials. Liquid chromatography mass spectrometer, used in studies involving isolation and identification of compounds and elucidation of molecular weights. 3D printing machine, used for research involving 3D structures printed on different substrates. Hot pressing machine and pilot dyeing machine that are normally used when investigating transfer of dye molecules on textile substrates. These are used together with sample washing machines, sample drying machines, and digital pH meters. Several equipment are available for studying fiber fineness, yarn evenness, yarn strength, abrasion resistance, bursting strength of materials, crease recovery properties of fabrics, draping, and flexural properties of materials. Now this is the Energy Simulation Laboratory. It is used for modeling and simulation of energy-related research work. For example, we have an ongoing research on parametric analysis and performance optimization of Archimedean screw turbine for microhydropower generation using computational fluid dynamics. My name is Faris Tida. I'm an energy researcher at Mo University. I'm working on, uh, currently I'm working on uh, hydro turbine, a new type that uses a screw. It's meant for small streams, so it is for, for micro hydro. I'm working on uh, some parameters to check at the parameter levels that will give us um, the best uh, efficiency. So basically, I want to make the machine more efficient. Now, some of the parameters we have uh, are shown here in the diagram. You can see uh, that um, we have the screws here, so we have a number of blades. In this case, I'm using four blades. The, the rate of flow is very important to us. Uh, we must check that, we must check the angle at which these screws will be inclined. If this is the, the inlet uh, section, this is the outlet section, and the screw is in between. Uh, when water flows, the hydropower or the, 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 the energy in the flow um, will make this screw rotate. Then we shall connect it to a generator and get our power. Now we need to make it uh, uh, very efficient. This study is uh, CFD based. Uh, we just using computer to, to, to calculate the, the, the flow dynamics. So this thing here is called the meshing, and you can see the mesh has been generated for the calculations. And then after that, we, we set the boundary conditions. And after the boundary conditions, we can go to the final stage, 
uh, we are using hydrostatic force to generate the, the torque, you can see that the lower part uh, experiences more pressure. So the colors there just shows the level of pressure, like the red color here, you can see that the highest pressure is at the tip of the, at the, tip of the screw. The yellow one, you can see it in between this there, so it shows that the pressure increases from the tip towards the center of the screw. All the, the software I need, I'm using SolidWorks, this is installed, and um, that is a, those are the computer, uh, computer software for design. And the kind of software we have, we use the SolidWorks, we have a design modeler, um, we have a um, space claim, and we're using all, all the three to, take over to, 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 to come up with the, the geometries we need. And then for generally for, um, for simulation, uh, we use the ANSYS uh, software only, and that is um, using um, the Play Fluent, and also using CFX. This one of mine is basically, uh, I'm basically using CFX mainly, but I've also tried it in, in Fluent. My name is Wagan Shadmasi, and I'm an energy researcher in my university. Now I'm doing on biomass cook stores. Uh, my objective is to upgrade the performance of to put biomass cook stores. So this is my first objective is doing the model of the the model of the cook stove on, on uh, solid works. So this is a model, and it, has, it, is, it is two pots. That means it is two pots by Masuk. So the, this is the combustion chamber, and the combustion takes place here. And this is the ash water, and here is the first pot will be placed here. And this is the second pot, and this is the chimney. So that, uh, besides to improving the efficiency, uh, the uh, emission is lost to the environment will be reduced too because I will do those things by reducing the heat loss to the environment or due to the like the three mode of heat transfer. So heat loss by conduction conduction and radiation will be reduced by using some insulation uh, materials. So so in short this is the model uh, from solid work. And I will study the performance of the cook stove before conducting the experiment on uh, ANSI software. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Stephen Talai. I'm a lecturer and a coordinator for Australian students in the Department of uh, Energy and Mechanical Production and Engineering. So here, this is an uh, energy simulation lab whereby the students, after defending their proposal successfully, who are masters and PhD students, they come and do simulation here. So first thing that they do, is uh, they develop the model using using uh, computer aided and design. Then what follows from there, they do now simulation using uh, CFD, that is a uh, computerized free dynamics software. Then once they are confirmed that the exams are stable and reliable, what follows is that uh, they do now they go now do experimental validation down to our labs, of which it encompasses uh, the modern oil plaza equipment, which now they validate their results. This is the technology building. It houses the Energy Studies Laboratory. This laboratory is equipped with modern equipment that allows conduction of research in various thematic areas. For instance, we have an instrumented fluidized bed combustor that is used for research on combustion characteristics of different solid fuels and fuel blends, including unconventional fuels like biomass wastes. The fluidized bed combustor is equipped with sensors, a data acquisition system, along with a computer for data collection and analysis. The other equipment available in this laboratory include bomb calorimeter, used in analyzing energy calorific value contained in biomass material such as charcoal and briquettes. 
this is basically the combustion unit whereby we put the sample. Uh, we have uh, a cup whereby the sample is kept and then this is the stirring point. The cup plus the sample is inserted into this system and then uh, you open and ensure that uh, it is on before you ensure that the operation takes place. So this basically is the cooling system. When you put it on, it will always continue cooling as the process of uh, determining the specific calorific value takes place and then the results will be displayed by using the computer system. This is where all the data from the system will be displayed. We'll have the jacketed circle bump off and the ignition off. When, when, you, when you put your sample, this will be on, which means the process will begin and uh, combustion will take place. Then the specific value or heat capacity of that will be given and displayed by this computer system. X-ray diffractometer, used for nanotechnology analysis in terms of particle size, texture analysis, and structural morphology. A beam of light is projected to the sample that you're trying to analyze to determine its structure. This is basically where the beam projects and the sample is placed on this given side. The structure will be displayed uh, by using also a computer system, maybe substances like polymers and many more. This is the gas chromatography uh, equipment and uh, basically its function is an analytical technique that is basically used to separate uh, uh, components or chemical components uh, in, that are present in a mixture into their constituents. That is an basically to identify their quantities and also detect their presence. Uh, the gas supply, this is hydrogen gas. Um, this one is oxygen, pure HCl, that is uh, medical air. The find is nitrogen supply. Uh, helium will also be used as a mo the mobile phase. So the mobile phase feeds into the injector port of the of the GC. The carrier gas transports the substance after injection at the injector port. Then it passes through the column where separation occurs, it does the shaking and replace. And then as it exits, the detector uh, takes or con converts the signals that has, it has detected into electrical signals. Then uh, the acquisition unit converts it to data that can be understood by the human. So this basically, as time goes by, as the separation occurs, the first peak indicates the substances that are exiting the, um, exiting the detector port. This is the microwave synthesis unit. And when we open, we have a reaction system that is uh, around water flask fitted to the condenser and the uh, uh, stir. Inside the microwave are uh, dielectric heaters. Uh, there is the microwaves constantly change uh, direction, and uh, as they change direction, there is friction between the that is the reaction system and uh, the constantly changing microwave, in, leading to an increase in temperature and as a result of friction that is being generated within that given system. So um, it led to the conversion process by transesterification to produce the biodiesel. Um, this is a microwave reactor synthesizer or with a UV detector. Basically, they are used to do reactions at controlled environment. Yeah? They determine chemical reactions at a controlled environment. This is the high performance liquid chromatograph or also known as high pressure liquid chromatograph. Um, here uh, is a better modification of the GC because it helps in uh, separating components that are less volatile as compared to the one which the GC can do. This is an automated flash chromatograph system uh, and it is used to separate your components, uh, that is the mixtures, uh, that is the molecules of those mixtures, into distinct components. This is a UVB. The 
ultraviolet spectrophotometry. You will find that uh, after excitation, the ultraviolet will pass through the sample, and as it passes through the sample, uh, it modulates and gives uh, different colorations because of the UV light, and that value is displayed on the screen by giving you a, a spectrum of those components that you want to separate. This is called the particle counter and size analyzer. Uh, this is basically used to characterize the size distribution of uh, the particles that are found in samples. The School of Engineering has installed photovoltaic modules that facilitate solar energy-related research. Some of the research projects that are currently on experimental validation include performance degradation and reliability of solar photovoltaic module under field environmental conditions, design and evaluation of a grid-connected photovoltaic system, optimization and kinetic studies of sulfuric acid hydrolysis of silica sorghum stocks for bioethanol production. We have yet other research projects that are on design of small-scale solar wind hybrid system for off-grid energy generation, along with modeling and optimization of solar wind hybrid energy system. In this research, equipment such as wind vein is used in showing wind direction. We have also put in place a wind anemometer used for measuring wind velocity and a data logger used for storing wind data. The School of Engineering has installed a biogas digester at the student's eatery kitchen where food wastes are used as substrates for anaerobic digestion. The gas produced is used as a source of fuel in the kitchen. This plant is used for experimental research. For instance, there is a similar ongoing research on bio-augmented optimization of biogas recovery from municipal abattoir. Moi University values access to information as fundamental in higher education research and training. For this reason, we have up-to-date information resources available in the library. My name is uh, Mr. James Abisai, Deputy University Librarian in charge of services. Moi University Library is as old as Moi University itself. The library system of Moi University has grown. Uh, initially, we had a small bookstore, uh, but as we are talking now, Margaret Thatcher Library alone has got over 350,000 volumes. This is uh, a significant addition to the library store. In addition to the bookstore, we also have other resources in the library. For example, now with the advent of information technology, and uh, the internet, we have a comprehensive collection of e-resources in terms of e-journals and e-books and other non-print materials like CD-ROMs and so on, which are uh, housed in our library. Some of the databases accessible through our library include Taylor and Francis, Journal of the American Institute of Electrical Engineers, American Institute of Physics, Emerald, Wiley Online Library, and ProQuest eBook Central. The library has installed a web-based fully integrated library management software in all its libraries. Books and other materials are catalogued and processed electronically, with records being availed online to users instantly. Our university is a complete society. Students have tuck shops where they purchase various items, as well as restaurants where they can eat and drink at their own pleasure. 
All of these are housed under one roof known as the Student Center. This facility also features areas designed for recreational activities and indoor games. Just right outside the Student Center is an aesthetic outdoor space with the site of our Wi-Fi mast. Through the mast, learners have access to wireless internet connectivity that enhances their learning opportunities within and beyond the classrooms. Here lies our football, basketball, and volleyball courts. And then this is where inter-university sporting activities organized by Kenya University Sports Association comes alive. Our final stop is the students' residential units. Where are some of our postgraduate students live on campus where there are a lot of suites, others are housed in Elder Town. Our residence houses have excellent interior designs. Thank you for joining us in this virtual tour.